An inquest last week found that the position of a police van and a recovery vehicle contributed to the death of 19-year-old George Wakefield. Now, to be fair, they say the lad's speed was a probable factor too, but even if he was speeding, the f it was the fact the police vehicle and recovery truck were parked where they were that led to the events that ultimately led to the death of George. George had been travelling along the A57 Snake Pass from Glossop on September 29, 2018, as he approached the parked police vehicle and recovery truck. A white Skoda attempted to overtake the vehicles and then collided with George, who was on his motorbike. The inquest also found that the police management of the recovery also contributed to George's death. The four-day inquest at Chesterfield Coroner's Court and an 11-person jury heard how the police van and recovery truck occupied almost the full width of the Glossop bound lane. Police had failed to place any warning signs to warn oncoming traffic of the block as the police on the scene believed the flashing lights of the vehicles as well as the permanent speed warning signs in the area would be appropriate enough measures. Now, similarly, if a road traffic management company had done the same, as in they thought their yellow flashing lights and the speed limit warning signs for the road were enough, and a motorist hit one of their plant machines or went into a hole that they had dug and died, you can guarantee they would be up on corporate manslaughter charges, at the very least, which is an offence under Section 1 of the Corporate Manslaughter and Corporate Homicide Act 2007. But of course, this is the police we're talking about here, so the police simply get a bit of extra training. And that's not a joke, by the way. Since the incident, a new e-learning package was produced in relation to recovering vehicles on bends, and both of the officers involved in the incident were made to complete that training. At the inquest, a forensic examiner suggested that George was likely, likely travelling at speeds up to 85 miles an hour. Now, bearing in mind that wording is everything when it comes to police and the law, speeds up to 85 miles an hour does not mean he was travelling at that speed at the time of the collision. Otherwise, they would have said he was travelling at 85 miles an hour at the time of the collision. George didn't die at the scene, but rather was taken to Salford Royal Hospital by air ambulance, underwent successful surgery on multiple broken bones, but his condition worsened after a brain issue. Surgery was undertaken to relieve the pressure on his brain but was not successful and he was pronounced dead on the 2nd of October 2018. The inquest had set out to see if George Wakefield's treatment in hospital could have been altered in any way to prevent his death. The jury was told that it was likely the fat from the bone marrow from his broken bones entering his circulation soon after the collision and that there was no evidence to suggest that there was anything the hospital could have done to prevent George's death. But there was something the police could have done to prevent his uh, death, isn't there? Putting warning signs up. But of course, the inquest, although found their actions to have contributed to the death, skirted over that and concentrated on what the hospital could have done. And that George may have been travelling of speeds of up to 85 miles an hour, without suggesting the speed he was travelling at at the time of the collision occurring. A medical cause of death was given a cerebral fat embolization caused by multiple fractures suffered in a road traffic collision. The jury concluded that George's death was a result of a road traffic collision. No shit, Sherlock. It certainly wasn't caused due to a race of alien hamsters raining down on him from their spacecraft causing visual obstructions. I suppose the best way to get out of any trouble is to blame the dead guy. They can't argue their case and it makes no difference to them now they're dead, so... You know, fuck it, blame the dead guy.